Thank you, Jamie. Hey, good morning. Um, I, I, I'm guessing that to, uh, this service is uh, kind of like the other one um, in that I'm supposed to give an announcement right now. Um, I'm looking around. Is, is Bonnie here this morning? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Bonnie is graduating. Uh, Bonnie Abel, our Minister of Discipleship, is uh, graduating on Friday. And, and so Sunday, uh, our staff parish team is uh, kind of pulling together to just have a, a, a little, a little a time of honoring and, and uh, uh, thanking God uh, for uh, that, not only that accomplishment, but really uh, Bonnie is excited to share this with her church family. She's only allowed a, a couple invitations to her graduation, um, and, and so you all aren't invited. Um, uh, we all aren't invited, <laughs> but... Uh, but uh, Next Sunday, uh, between uh, 10 o'clock and 10.45, we'll just have a light brunch uh, with Bonnie. And so uh, I'd invite you to, to come and be a part of that. But also, uh, if, if you're not able to, to stick around, then uh, I know Bonnie will, will kind of be a, have, have a card table and, and be at each of the uh, worship services next week. So uh, I figured she's graduated. She can be at every worship service next week, right? Uh, <laughs> but uh, good morning. It's, it's really good to see each of you here today. Uh, a special welcome to those of you who are uh, newer or uh, maybe visiting, uh, either in person or online. Uh, I hope each of you feels like an honored guest today. Uh, as a church, we are in week three of a 20-week guided tour of the Bible's essential passages. Uh, we're, we are taking a trip through the scriptures, recognizing that we can't stop at every story, every landmark, uh, but we are going to stop at some of the most important destinations. And in case we haven't met, um, my name is Andy, and I am your primary tour guide uh, through these next several weeks on our adventure. So I'm, 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 I'm really, I'm glad to be back after uh, an unexpected visit from COVID kept me out uh, last Sunday. Uh, don't you just hate it when you get sick at the most inopportune times? Like, uh, f for me, it's almost, it's like I get sick right when I'm about to have some time off. You know, I don't know, my body just says, hey, you've been running 110% for too long. I know you've got some time off coming up here, so we're just going to shut down then. I don't know. That wasn't the case this time, but, but it did feel like a very inopportune time in many other ways. Uh, uh, anybody here ever get sick when you're going, when you're on vacation? Isn't that the worst? Like you're not even at home and, and you're, you're sick. Um, this, this wasn't exactly vacation for us, but, but uh, Amy, Joe, and I, when we traveled to China, uh, back in 2010 to uh, adopt our daughter, uh, I ate something that didn't agree with me. It, it, it wasn't uncommon. If you've ever been to China, they tell you don't touch anything. Like you only eat the special stuff and drink the special stuff because, because uh, you can get sick pretty, pretty easily or just uh, bodies aren't used to, to certain uh, bacteria. Anyway, I ate something that didn't agree with me. It knocked me out. And uh, nothing would stay down, including the medications uh, that, that they were trying to give me in a foreign language. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, no, nothing helped. Uh, everything went right through me, all the medications. It was, it was horrible. Um, it, also, on top of it, we had an 11-month-old who did not yet trust us as her parents. Um, we were in a foreign country. Uh, even the doctors, they were not speaking the same language. Uh, we had to have translators for the doctors uh, in the hotel. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the beds were, it, it, it were like plywood. Uh, I mean, rock hard. Uh, so no comfort laying in bed either. I, and I was missing everybody back home. You know, I was, I was missing our family, uh, our church family. It was Holy Week. Like they said, get up, go, um, and, and we went, uh, no questions asked about the timing, and it was right during Easter. So it's like, well, uh, you know, getting, getting sick when you're traveling and everything around you is unfamiliar, it is, it is the absolute worst. So, so let's just make a little deal here today. So I want you to kind of imagine that you're on a tour bus, 
right? These, these 20 weeks, we're, we're on a tour together. We're making these stops at destinations. I, I want you to make this, this little deal with me. As, as we explore our third destination during our foundations tour here, uh, don't drink the water, okay? Bring your own. Uh, don't, don't take any food offered by the locals during this particular stop. I don't want you to get sick, especially not here, because you see, in order to understand the significance of today's tour stop, I'm gonna show you some of the surrounding area. And, and let's just say that it includes the bad part of town. Uh, you don't wanna get sick here, okay, deal? All right, so, so let's, let, let's have a, a quick recap of our first two stops for those of you who uh, uh, missed out on those. Uh, we, we visited uh, on, our, on our first destination, the very beginning. Uh, we looked to when God created the heavens and the earth, and we focused especially on day six when God made humanity in his own image. God created humanity, us, as his image bearers to reflect his character to the entire world. He sent us out into all the earth as his representatives. Of course, that plan went awry when humanity rebelled against God. I actually did the exact opposite of what God commanded us. In the Tower of Babel story, well, we see that clearly. We saw human beings sought to bring themselves glory instead of reflecting God's glory. And on top of that, instead of filling the earth, humanity chose instead to stay where they were comfortable. But despite this rebellion, this is the good news, uh, God still sought to redeem the world. And he began by calling one man and his wife, Abraham and Sarah. God chose to bless them in order that they and their descendants would be a blessing to the rest of the world, to all the peoples of the earth, to all the nations. And last week, while I was sick, uh, tour guide Bonnie showed that biblical blessing entails the ideas of, of fruitfulness, of multiplication, of fullness, of life. A and this blessing promised to Abraham and his people would ultimately lead to the blessing of all the peoples on the earth. And this promise, we found last week, wasn't just for Abraham and his descendants. The Bible tells us that in Christ, you and I become heirs of that same promise that God gave to Abraham. And if we become heirs to the promise of blessing, we are also heirs to God's mission that he gave Abraham to be a blessing. We, the church, are blessed to be a blessing to the world. Now, today's destination is especially significant because in it we find out how God intends his people, how God intends us to be a blessing to the nations. Today we get to that all important question, how? How? So let me set the stage here. You heard the, the scripture passage that Jamie read just a few moments ago, um, uh, but, but I, I want to step back a little bit to where we left off last week. After God first called Abraham to leave his people and go to the land that God would promise them, at that same time, that's when, when God promised his blessing to Abraham so that he would be a blessing to the world, Abraham responded with faithful obedience. Genesis chapter 12, verse 4, the very next verse after last week's verse, simply tells us, so Abram went as the Lord had told him. That's faithful obedience. Abraham was 75 years old at the time and childless. And we'll see that his faith would be tested repeatedly over the next couple of decades. Here are some of the things that happen in the, the next few chapters. Uh, a famine, after Abraham got to the promised land, a famine forced him to leave, to go to Egypt. Um, uh, later, his nephew Lot was captured by the locals, and Abraham had to raise up an army of his servants and his servants' families uh, to rescue Lot. Still, no child. At one point, Abraham was talking with God, and he's like, God, I'm going to have to give all of my inheritance to my chief servant, because I don't have a child 
to pass this on to. Didn't you say something about making me a father of many nations? <laughs> and and uh, God reassured him that he would indeed do so. Still, no child. Sarah uh, devised a plan to have Abraham sleep with her uh, a maidservant, Hagar. Uh, uh, she then bore a child, Ishmael. But God said, hey, wait, no, no, don't take things into your own hands. My promised heir is supposed to come through Sarah. God then reinitiated his covenant with Abraham, that Abraham would be a father to many nations, blessed to be a blessing, if Abraham would be, remain faithful and obedient. And the sign of Abraham's faithfulness uh, and that covenant relationship was that uh, all the men and boys of his household, of his servants, of, of everyone, would be circumcised. That would be a sign of this covenant. And, and Abraham laughed, and he wondered, okay, whatever, God, but how in the world are you going to give me a son when I'm 100 years old? My wife, Sarah, she's 90. And after Abraham responded with faithfulness, all the men were circumcised. That was a painful week for the people of God. Chapter 18 tells us that that God and his two angels uh, appeared to Abraham. They appeared to Abraham as weary travelers on the road, and Abraham welcomed them with hospitality, and, and they blessed Abraham. They said, hey, within a year, Sarah is going to give birth to a son. And that's when we get to the passage for today that Jamie just read. Here's what's going on. The Lord and his angels are on their way to Sodom, a familiar city in the scriptures. They're on their way to Sodom because they have heard, the Lord has heard a great outcry against the wickedness of that city and its neighboring city, Gomorrah. And on their way to Sodom is when they stop in and visit Abraham and Sarah, promising that they will have their son within a year. And as they are leaving, God and the two angels, God has this this little conversation with himself. This this is how it goes. Starting uh, verse 17. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do. What is it that the, the Lord is about to do here? If, if you read on, you find that he's, he's on his way, right? He's, he's about to pronounce judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah for their wickedness. So God is, is wondering to himself, hey, if he should share with Abraham what, what he is about to do. And, and in verse 18, the Lord still kind of talking with himself, maybe, maybe uh, chatting with the, the angels there. He reiterates the promised plans that he has for Abraham, the, the plans that we saw him promise uh, last week at our second destination. Verse 18, Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all the nations on earth will be blessed through him. Listen closely to verse 19. This is the key verse. This is our destination for this week. God continues. For I have chosen him, Abraham, so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Let me break this down. There's a lot of good stuff in this destination. Let me just kind of summarize this. God has chosen Abraham. We saw that last week. He's chosen Abraham. He reiterates it here. I have chosen Abraham. Why has God chosen Abraham? According to this verse, so that Abraham will direct his children and his household after him to do this, to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Ultimately, so that God will bring about what he has already promised Abraham. And and what has God promised Abraham? God God has, has promised that he would bless Abraham and his descendants to be a blessing to the nations. Here's, here's another way of looking at this. What's the mission that God has given Abraham? to bless the whole world, 
to, to bless the nations. He promised this to Abraham. Then how, how is that going to be achieved? Well, th- this is so important, how it's going to be achieved. The nations will be blessed by a community of God's people who are taught to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. That's how the nations are going to be blessed. Well, and who, who's this community going to be? Well, God chose Abraham for that. Abraham and his descendants, including, according to the Bible, those of us who are in Christ, the church. God chose Abraham and us to be his people who follow his ways of righteousness and justice so that all the world will be blessed through us. Now, in the rest of our time this morning, I want to explore what is new in this destination from the previous two. Uh, I, we, we've already seen that God has chosen Abraham, blessed to be a blessing, that we are to be God's image bearers. We, we've already seen that. The new part here is the how. How that blessing will actually happen. Abraham and the church today are blessed to be a blessing. And the way we are to be a blessing, the way we are to glorify God and reflect his image is to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. The people of God are called to follow God's ways. Get this. In the midst of a world that looks like Sodom. Now, here's where we're walking to the other side of the tracks, folks. You see, the context for God's intention for Abraham to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, the context right here in this passage is God's trip to Sodom in response to the outcry, to the wickedness that has risen up amongst the people there. Verse 20 right after God explained why he chose Abraham and how Abraham was to be a blessing. This is the very next verse. Then the Lord said, and he says it to Abraham, we find out. The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know, God says. The scriptures here are establishing a contrast. A contrast between the way of the Lord and the ways of Sodom. So to understand the way of the Lord, we've got to go to the other side of the tracks and see what the scriptures are saying about the ways of Sodom. But I just got to warn you, don't drink the water, right? Okay. Just bring your water, your bottled water here this time. You, you do not want to get sick here. Uh, Sodom is mentioned throughout the scriptures and is synonymous with wickedness and evil. Uh, in fact, already, like this isn't uh, like a new thing in the scriptures. Already, Genesis 13, 13, we're told, now the people of Sodom were wicked uh, and they sinned greatly against the Lord. So we've, we've already gotten that. Like Abraham's already been made aware of that. Uh, uh, but here in our passage today, we know that the Lord is responding because of this great outcry that he's heard coming up from Sodom and its twin city, Gomorrah. And, and in the next chapter, if you go on to read the next chapter, Genesis 19, uh, you'll see some of the specifics of their wickedness, uh, a perverted and violent sexual immorality. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, there's, there's a little bit of a summary. We, we learn that the part of Sodom's uh, wickedness was their idolatry. They, they, instead of worshiping God, they worshiped created things. Uh, the, the prophet Isaiah, when, when preaching against uh, the people of God's corruption, Jerusalem's corruption, uh, compares it with Sodom for uh, specific things. It's violence and it's injustice. 
Uh, the prophet Ezekiel does exactly the same thing, but adds on a few other sins to it too, including sins of arrogance and greed and ignoring the poor. And then in the New Testament, the, 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 this continues, the same theme. Sodom is held up as wicked and synonymous with God's judgment for, uh, specifically in the New Testament, uh, a whole variety of social evils, but, but especially sexual immorality. In case it isn't clear, Sodom throughout the scriptures is held up as an example of human rebellion at its worst, along with being recipients of God's judgment. Sodom was a place filled with oppression, cruelty, violence, perverted sexuality, idolatry, pride, and greedy consumption. Uh, furthermore, uh, the, the, the people didn't care for the needy amongst them. Folks, this, this description isn't a far cry from our world today, is it? I mean, not at all. And, and yet, here, here's, here's what's wild about all this. The mission of God's people to bear his image, to be a blessing to the nations, that mission hasn't changed. It's just been reiterated by Jesus. We are still called to be those who keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. If the nations are going to be blessed, God's people must, we must walk in God's ways. But what are God's ways? What does it mean to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just? Uh, I don't think we need to make this too complicated. I mean, keeping, keeping the way of the Lord uh, is, is what it sounds like. It's, it's reflecting God's character. It's imitating God. It's obeying God's commands. It's, it's doing for others what God has already done for you through his grace and his redemption. In short, it, it means doing the exact opposite of what we see in the scriptures here, the Sodom was doing. And, and in case it isn't abundantly clear, in this passage, Genesis 18, 19, uh, there are included two super important, extremely important biblical words. Uh, uh, the words that are translated here as doing what is right and just. Uh, these words appear in the Old Testament hundreds of times. Hundreds. They're some of the most popular words uh, uh, words of significance in, in the, the scriptures. Uh, so let's look at each of them. Uh, their, their noun forms are translated as words that we're very familiar with, righteousness and justice. Uh, so, so let's look at them. Uh, they're integral in understanding the way of the Lord, both then and, and now. Uh, doing what is right, uh, righteousness, uh, comes from the, the Hebrew root word tzedek, uh, which means straight, uh, something that is fully as it should be. Tzedek is, is something by which um, other things are measured against. It is, it is so true, it is so straight, it is so right, everything else is measured against it. So, so righteousness then is doing what is, what is right, what is expected expected by God in any given circumstance. It's doing what you ought to do. Pretty straightforward. That's righteousness. Now, doing what is just is the Hebrew word shapat, uh, or in its noun form, mishpat, uh, which is, means justice. And, and this is oftentimes used as, as kind of a, a legal term, uh, but its basic meaning is putting things right putting them right, intervening in a situation that is not righteous, that is off kilter somehow, intervening in a situation in order to make it right, something that was wrong. And when these two words are used side by side, which happens a ton in the scriptures, they carry the comprehensive meaning of, of doing what is right and fixing what is wrong so that it is made right. It's a, a comprehensive term. In fact, that is exactly what God himself was doing on his way to Sodom. God, God has heard the cry of the oppressed, and he's on his way to check it out. 
and ultimately to make right something that has gone so wrong. Now, as God's people, we are to be about keeping God's ways of righteousness and justice too. And in doing so, we are fulfilling God's promise through Abraham that that all the peoples of the earth will be blessed. But by keeping the way of the Lord, the nations, the people outside of God's people will be blessed. The problem is, so often the church today reflects a lot more of Sodom than it does the keeping in the way of the Lord. I mean, how can God's people witness to a violent and broken world when we oftentimes treat other Christians with anger and contempt? And how can God's people bless an immoral world when we ourselves practice immorality? How is it possible to give hope to the hopeless who are out there when, when so often we condemn and judge and take away hope from people who are in here? How can we share the good news of Jesus Christ when we ourselves are so infected by the bad news ourselves? The answer is we can't. Really, there's, there's no way no way we can ever fulfill the mission of God that he's entrusted to us, the, 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 the promise to, to us through Abraham to be a blessing to the nations. We, we cannot do it unless a couple of important things happen. First, we, 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 really, we can never take a step to fulfilling uh, God's mission unless we ourselves have been redeemed by God. Just as God chose Abraham, he plucked Abraham out of uh, a world gone awry. He, pluck, he saved, he, he redeemed Abraham through his faith. Just as he did that, we too must experience the grace of God made available to us through faith in Jesus. If you look at Genesis 18, 19, our destination for today, it's, it's really clear. I mean, Abraham was chosen by God. He was redeemed by God's grace. And, and, and there is no way that, that we, the church, can be a light to the nations without first being redeemed by the light of the world. Jesus. You know, I, I truly believe that most of us here, uh, I'm guessing most of us uh, joining online too, have, have been redeemed by Christ. You, you, you have if you've acknowledged your sin and, and the hopelessness that you have to save yourself, and instead you've put your hope and your faith and your trust in what Jesus has done on the cross to save you. And if you've, if you've not turned from your sin and turned toward Jesus to receive his grace and his forgiveness and promise of new life and purpose for life, then you know, today's the day, folks. Like, do, do so today. You can never, never live into God's blessing apart from knowing Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate blessing of God to us. Of course, many of you uh, already, you know and you love Jesus. You do. Praise God. I, I'm so grateful for it. We're, we're a church of Jesus Christ with people who know Jesus and love Jesus. Thank you. Uh, uh, keep it up. Uh, but you know what? That's not enough to fulfill God's mission. That's not enough. You must also be empowered by God's Holy Spirit to follow in Abraham's footsteps. You and I, we, we, we have to learn the way of the Lord and practice righteousness and justice. This, this, I love this. This is, the, this is the ethical component of being God's people. The ethical component of God's mission we must learn and follow God's ways or the peoples of this world will never experience God's love and blessing for them. The way we live is of utmost importance to the mission that God has entrusted to us. 
And in the next couple of weeks, we're going to go deeper in, in a couple of additional aspects of this. Uh, next week, we're going to learn how God's redemption and deliverance always comes first. It always precedes his call to obedience and following his ways. Uh, God doesn't expect us to meet some certain standard and then says, okay, you're mine now. No, he calls us his own. He loves us. He saves us. He redeems us. And then he calls us to follow in his ways. That's next week. Then Memorial Day Sunday, we're going to explore another key component we see in Genesis 18, 19 here, and that is the importance and the necessity of teaching the way of the Lord to others, to, to each other in the church and to others who follow us, especially and in including the next generation. Uh, but I don't want you to miss the importance of today's tour stop. The mission that God gave Abraham and to us is to be a blessing to the nations. And we do so by keeping the way of the Lord and doing what is right and just in a world that is doing just the opposite. So let's take just a moment before I close this in prayer uh, for, for you to allow God's Spirit to m make this personal for you. Well, what's the necessary next step that God has for you to live into his mission, to be a blessing to the nations, to all the peoples around you? Listen to God's Spirit. Help, uh, ask God's Spirit to help identify what that next step is for you. I mean, for, for some of you, uh, you may say, you know what? Uh, I really need to be redeemed and delivered by God. If that's you, I mean, you might be thinking just as Abraham had faith to trust in God, you're thinking, I, I need to put my faith in Christ and his saving work on my behalf. And if you're, if you're thinking that's your next step, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Let's talk. That is such a vital, important step, not only receiving God's blessing, but in, in journeying with Jesus in the mission that God has given us. But if you've already done that, what, 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 what could your next step be? I mean, maybe, maybe God's Spirit is whispering to you, man, it is time to get serious about learning the ways of the Lord. That's, that's discipleship. You know, what, what does it mean to learn the, the way of the Lord? If, if you are at that point in your life where it's, okay, I, I really have to, to grow in my discipleship, then, then please uh, reach out to me, maybe reach out to Bonnie. We would love to connect you up with others who are intentionally growing in their discipleship, undergoing intentional discipleship training. Uh, others of you, maybe, maybe, maybe you're doing that. Maybe God's Spirit is convicting you that, that there are some aspects of your heart and your life that reflect more the ways of the world than they do reflect the ways of the Lord. Uh, maybe specifically around righteousness in some particular areas or, or living for the Lord's justice in your life and others. You know, if, you, if your heart has components, maybe not, maybe not overflowing, but just little things that arise in you of greed or rage, or violence, or lust, or judgment and condemnation of others. You know what? God's Spirit wants to transform that. God wants to weed that stuff out, wants the way of the Lord to become the dominant aspect of your life, the fruit of the Spirit. You know, Paul, Paul says it best here in uh, Galatians chapter 5. He says the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. He says, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. 
Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and its desires. God has loved you and saved you, blessed you to be a blessing by living a different kind of life than the world around you, by keeping the way of the Lord and doing what is right and just. Let's pray together. Oh, Heavenly Father, your, your plan of redemption is mind-blowing to me. And from the beginning, you entrusted us to be your image bearers, your representatives in this world. And we blew it. But you never gave up on us. And through Abraham, you initiated that same plan and even though Abraham's descendants failed too, time and time again, you still didn't quit on us. You remained faithful. And ultimately, you blessed the world by redeeming us through Jesus. He brought us into a saving relationship with you, and we, we are extremely grateful. And now we pray that you would fill us with his spirit so that we we may live out the promise you gave us through Abraham and ultimately through Jesus to bless the nations by walking in the way of the Lord, by doing what is right and just and by teaching others to do the same. Fill us with your spirit that, that we can know your ways, Lord, so we will be convicted about where we fail to do what is right and just so that we'll have the courage today and tomorrow and the day after that to do what is right and just so that we're filled with peace and joy as we do so and ultimately so the world around us will see your goodness and your grace through the way that we live differently than the ways of the world with the love and the hope of Jesus we pray it in his name. Amen. Would you stand together? Let's, let's call out to God one more time together.